James Eveson. Uh, you might have heard of, I've been releasing drum and bass for about the last eight years on various, like, lots of liquid labels, good looking creative source. Uh, I put an album out on V Recordings just uh, about two years ago. More of a kind of down tempo vibe, but recently, this last year, I've been kind of getting really back to my roots. Um, getting back to this like early 90s, 92, 94 kind of rave jungle vibe. Um, so I'm now working with Ingredients Records and we're do I'm doing this alias Dead Man's Chest just to like compile all this rave jungle stuff. Uh, there's an EP, it's out in shops right now. Uh, this is a Dreamscapes EP. And what I've got here is um, it's a tune from the Follow EP, EP which should be dropping in, well, next month or so, maybe two, we'll see, it's drum and bass. Um, it's, it's kind of inspired by um, these tapes I had when I was younger, there's, uh, there's two compilation tapes, Rave Generation, Rave Generation 2, uh, and they were released in like 93 and 94 respectively, um, and I, I was a kid at the time, but these, these were hugely influential in my kind of getting into drum and bass and jungle, and so I've been having fun with this old school stuff. Um, I kind of wanted to go in and just like snatch little samples just from, from these original tapes I had and kind of flip them and make something new with them. So this tune is uh, Liquid 94 and it's it's in reference to, uh, there's a tune on like, this is on Rave Generation 2 and it's the first first time I heard it was in 94 and it's it's called Liquid is Liquid by Liquid. Um, you'll know them from the anthem that like Sweet Harmony but Liquid is Liquid was always the one that I vibed on like a real deep melancholy thing so this is kind of it's always go in and like just take little snippets out and like totally flip it give it a new vibe and and just have fun with it really and it's it's something for the old school heads because they, they'll kind of pick up on the little elements in there but you know i've tried to be as creative with it as possible and just flip it into something new while still paying homage to uh the guys that inspired me to get into this whole thing uh, so initially like the main hook that I was uh, really vibing off as a kid it was this little bit here. It's just like a little harpsichord kind of stab. So I cut up all the stabs. Uh, there's a little template that you can uh, basically assign to the push and make it like an MPC. find the tutorial online like I did. I, I set this up like about a year ago. I've just been dropping into the same tutorials. Essentially it's using the simpler. Um, you cut a slice to MIDI, you cut the audio to MIDI and you just assign it to the pads and then you can go in on each of the little uh, sounds here. So I've got the full loop. Um, and I've gone in on the, the start, the loop, the length, the fade can edit all these to kind of um, loop over and over. One sec. You can hear that. So yeah, basically I've got, I've got the little sounds. I assigned each of the stabs to a different pad. Uh, went in on like the loops and the lengths and the phase of each note so they kind of got drawn out and it's um, there's a sound I quite like where a lot of old school tunes like on, on the mutant bass line where it's resampled and you get this this variation in pitch that goes up is like like that. And I was kind of trying to get a similar like vibe on the end of the way the sample tails off. Just give it a bit of more like movement, some more organic kind of juicy movement throughout the loop. And I basically put a placeholder break in while I was um, playing with this and just kind of jammed over it with like... And came out with this. basically created just jamming over a little break I had going. Uh, if we zoom in you see like the the notes are all, they're not quite on beat um, just to keep it loose and it just sounds good over the beat it's, it just gives it this kind of human element. Um, 
just so it's not rigid. I mean, that's what a lot of Jungle Rave was. It was quite slapped together and the timing's all a bit out. It's like nothing's really that precise. So just keeping that kind of human feel is quite important to the, um, the overall feel of the tune. Okay, so in terms of effects on this loop, um, I've put quite, I just need to make it sound a little juicier. So if we, if we take everything off, Right, which doesn't have much presence, so um, I've gone in. I've got saturated, gives it a little bit of fizz. Uh, multi band dynamics, it's I'm, I mean, I don't really know what it does that well, but it, it kind of juice you can juice up different parts of the, the frequency range. Uh, just yeah, it can you can bring out like the lows and like get them compressed and bring them up more in line with what's going on with the rest of it, just gives it extra fizz again. Touch of reverb, uh, utility. I I think um, oh I upped the width on this, so I just gave it more more of like a stereo image, uh, just a bit more kind of cinematic quality. EQ. I've just like I've just chopped off the low end, a tiny bit of the high, and just given it a boost. Uh, and I've got a glue, glue compressor as well. I've not actually compressed the sound, but what you'll see later is. Um, a technique that I quite like to implement is um, just to give the loop some space around the beats as they often assign like a sidechain compressed to the kick so the sound just duck out a little bit with the kick and it just kind of it's not so much about volume it's about how it works with the with the drums um, and then you'll just get loops that kind of work around the drums and snake around it rather than having like a full wedge of sound over it and I'll go into that in a bit more detail later so now, yeah, so with all the sounds, uh, with the effects, it's just got a lot more presence. Right, so as we build up the layers, I had this initial loop that I was working with. Um, the next thing I did, I went in on a vocal. Um, started off uh, again I went in on the the MPC assign it to different bits but I started off with this little bit of audio here it's a little bit of breath just on the on the pluck With these vocal chops, it's a full a cappella. Um, it's, it's kind of just taken out of uh, an R&B a cappella. I'll show you essentially what I've got here. I'd, I'd be listening through, just finding snatches of vocals that I think would work, and you see like all these little chops out here. I drag them out onto a separate channel, and then I, I end up with like um, a few instances of the vocals that I really liked that worked with the rest of it. From there, I did the uh, this you know. I did convert slice to MIDI. Oh, here it's right, slice to me MIDI track. Um, so I've got my template, the CMPC push again. Uh, just chucked it on there. The same kind of thing as the previous stab melody. I've had these vocal chops where I could just session. So what I do, I just I just kind of jam with this over the loop. Loop. 
Again, it's the same techniques I used with the stabs, where I kind of went in on, on like looping little sections of audio, just to give it that tail. Um, yeah, so essentially after that, I kind of had my vibe, like this is the, the hook of the tune. So there's one part on the, the melodic loop. Um, I've just gone in on the automation, like to the EQ8. It's essentially like um, uh, using it like a high pass filter, just sweeping up and down, again, to give a bit more movement. So you can see with the... Uh, gets the loop moving around a little bit more as if it's just a flat loop it just makes the sound a lot more interesting effects on the vocals I've just literally again I've just put a bit of saturation on just give it a bit more presence and fizz uh, and just like a touch of reverb actually quite a lot of reverb and that um, I automated the reverb I'm not sure I automate a lot no not yet <laughs> so yeah saturation reverb simple and so yeah, just this, this little breathy bit, literally, again, uh, touch reverb, saturation, I've really boosted the highs on this just to give it a sharpness, because uh, I really like the, the breathy sound that comes off the back of it. <laughs> Some nice texture in there. I mean, yeah, it's essentially just, just working this four bar loop, this is where it all starts, um, and getting to a point where I can progress. And, as well as the, the vocals and the main stab. I just wanted a little bit of, like, I want some atmospherics behind it just to thicken up the sound a bit, uh, give it a kind of a bit more of a spacey vibe. So the last thing I put in with this melodic section is this pad here. Basically what this is, it's just it's just literally just audio dropped into the channel um, and cut and pitched up and down. Like I didn't even once once I had the I mean I like using the MPC, the MPC push setting to kind of jam, that's what I use with my MIDI keyboard, but I'm just trying to get ideas out. Uh, and once I'm in a loop, I kind of start I just sit back and I listen to it and I'll um, I'll just I'll start hearing kind of melodies in my head. I'll, I'll kind of putting things together. Just I've got a little vibe going on. Uh, once I kind of know where I'm going, I, I don't really need to have that freestyle element um, because I've, I know what I'm aiming for. So I'd literally just grab chunks of audio, um, and it's just one sound. I mean, this original pad. Just, just with the, the pitch settings on the audio, just with the transpose, I just like uh, pitch up and down a few semitones, and then go in on the fades. You've got this really nice kind of like uh, way to blend bits of audio, so they kind of dr drift into each other. Um, so essentially, I've got chunks of the same pad, um, pitch it down, up and down different semitones, and then you're just creating a little kind of a melody like that. And again, I've got this uh, EQ automation. I've got both like... Um, I've got the low end, high ends going off that, so at one point the low will come out, the highs will come up. like a low pass filter and a high pass filter working simultaneously together. Uh, and I've got the entire loop then.
So right, once I had this, I kind of had my vibe. I got my like first 16 bars of the breakdown. Um, and moving on, I, well, I think I then at that point, I still had this placeholder break in there. I didn't want to kind of get my final drums in, but I just, I just had standard break beat I brought in. Um, drop the sounds over that beat just to, it's like almost like a, like a midi tick but it's nice to have the bit of swing so um, it's worked out my melody over the placeholder drum but I still haven't got my final breaks in um, but I just started messing about with the bass and those so over the second 16 bars of the breakdown just introducing this bass element and some extra vocals as well um, I'll get into these extra vocals. It's just again, it's it's another channel. Like it's just a copy of the original. Um, just an extra little snatch of vocal. So yeah, bass sound I'm using, just standard like big fat 808 uh, boom. Um, this one in particular actually came from, um, this is the, well, Junglis will know the tune One and Only by PFM. Um, and quite a few years ago, I think we, you know, we, we were chatting on Facebook and I was telling them how much I love the tune. Um, it's one of my favourite all time drum and bass tunes. I kind of just cheekily like mentioned about the idea of remixing it or something like that, and uh, he, he sent me all the parts, and I've still not had the balls to actually touch it. I've had a go, but it's um, it, it's such a perfect tune that there's there's nothing I've done thus far that goes anywhere near being like good enough. But um, at some point, best part of it though, I had the bass sound from it, and this is like the the thickest loveliest, boomiest 808. If you've ever heard this on a massive sound system, it just tears you apart. And um, I've been really enjoying just like chucking this 808 into my tunes <laughs> for the last few years. So thanks very much, PFM. Um, much appreciated. Uh, so again, I've got the same way with the pads. I compose the bass, just it's straight up dragging the audio into, this, into the arrangement page. Um, I could hear what was going on with the melody, so it's just a simple case of uh, I know what I'm going for. It's just using the, the transpose bit to um, pitch the bass up and down to the notes I want. Uh, I just find it kind of quicker doing it that way uh, than using MIDI keyboards. I think it comes from the days I, was, I used to use Reason, so um, uh, even then I'd, I'd use a little matrix pattern sequencer to, to put little bass lines in and stuff like that. I never really used MIDI keys, I'd just kind of jam it in. And this is just this is just kind of more like kind of what I know, um, just pitching audio up and down. So um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Big eight oh eight kick. Um, I've chucked a utility on the channel, and all I've done on that is um, clipped the little DC button. And uh, what that does, it just it just takes away everything below thirty hertz, so you get rid of that kind of. You don't really need anything beneath thirty hertz because there's there's no sound system that will register that anyway. Um, and it, the DC buttons, it, it's for kind of getting rid of like real low end hum on samples and stuff. But um, in this instance, I just use it as a kind of a high pass shelf on the kind of thirty hertz range just to get rid of that. Um, got a bit of compression just to fatten it up a little bit. Um, pretty simple though. It's just an eight oh eight hit. Just to soften up the uh, just get rid of the little clicks at the start of the, the bit. You see that right there just gets rid of that little tick. Comes in softer. Right. Okay, yes, yeah, so anyway, got my hook, I got where I'm going, I've got my, my whole breakdown. Uh, now I suppose it's ready to make the tune drop and so then I've kind of um, I've gone in with the breaks I've got rid of my uh, placeholder drums 
and this is where I started. <laughs> So yeah, started off, first break is the Think, uh, it's a very classic jungle break uh, from Lynn Collins, classic jungle break, and the, the original two step pattern is pretty straightforward. Um, so again, I've, just got the, I've got the audio that I just dropped into the arrange, and literally just by cutting it up, cutting slices out, I mean, I'd, I'd say, yeah, so I've, I've pitched this up to the, the speed of 157 BPM, it's better, the, the time stretch function on Ableton is, is brilliant, um, the warping function is great, but uh, as far as breaks go, you, you don't really want to, it's good for fine tuning things and, and getting like a snare to sit on the grid a little bit tighter, but I, I wouldn't go stretching breaks like too far beyond their original BPM, because you, you'll hear they'll start to break up a little bit. Um, you just won't get the quality um, and the thing is a lot of the original kind of jungle breaks it was just about like pitching the break up like speeding it up which is why they're all so high pitched and you get that like high end snap and uh, why James Brown sounds like a chipmunk on this drum so you've got this um, and then after that I might have gone in on the warping function a little bit uh, actually no this was a Rex yeah, so this is a recycled chop break that I did a while ago and again, so pitched up, sliced, um, just dropped it straight in. And then I just went in on the, yeah, basically the pattern, completely like uh, switched the rhythm of the break and just chopped it. So yeah, I've got, got the two, two, two bar loop. And you can just kind of um, chop bits out, rearrange things. Um, that's essentially what I've done here and um, just, just spent a while like riding it over the loop and getting like a nice little rhythm going on uh, it's not, not like mad choppage just got like um yeah, a bit of a jungle swagger. So yeah, if, if, if you're gonna go like kind of mad choppage, like um, a lot of people find trackers are still like best to use. Um, and that's just a bit beyond me, that's nuts. But like, um, I'm just happy. I chop in, chop in little sections and move around in the arrange page. So essentially, all right, what I've got on this break, effects wise, just to beef it up. Cause this is just the original break, like taken from, from the original funk record. Uh, so it's had no processing on it done before that, apart from what was done in the studio uh, on the original tune. Um, and just to give it that a bit more fizz, I'll take off the effects and then... Uh I mean, I love the sound of the break anyway, and I've, I've been layering it up with other hits, uh, so I've not done too much, but it's got the analog tape. Just give it a little bit of fizz and uh, more presence. As far as the EQ is going, it's got a boost on the uh, bottom end, it's tailed off the very lows, and then a little bit of boost on the highs as well to give the snare some snap. Oh, I've got this percussion ride, which is layered over the top, and um, again, I chopped this um, to fit the rhythm of the original break. We can see this does it just gives the gives a break it's a bit more pace it kind of fills it out a little bit more if i take it away it sounds out a little bit empty it kind of it doesn't have the roll to it just chucking this right in just kind of keeps it rolling forward a little bit more 
again it's just like um, a simple little ride loop it's just a little kind of swung break yeah it's basically like um, I've just got the hits sitting over the kicks and the snares so it kind of sounds tight with the rhythm uh, it gets it rolling and then um, I added this this next break it's just like um, a little Apache Amen variation again the original break it's like a little loop um, and I've just yeah gone in and kind of not this is like not meant to be at the forefront whatsoever but it just kind of adds to the uh, the role of the think as dropping those little like uh, bongo rolls in every now and again so on its own up the pace of the beat it's, it's about getting it rolling so I've got my essentially I've got these I've got two breaks and that's uh, that's 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 giving all I really need and um, got the ride just give me more pace and I, I don't really want to um, layer too much else on top of that because like the, the more you the more you put on like the, the more you take away from the original break and if you kind of chose that break you want that sound um, it's, it's best to leave it quite raw because um, like yeah you're just chucking loads of snares and beats on top it's, it's just going to kind of it's just going to get like a really a dull a fat but like it's going to be like a snare without much personality so um, I just want to I want to keep as much personality as I can with the original break I use so I've been quite um, literally just got one kick I think this is the kick here Got this on a separate channel. So yeah, this 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 think break, this Apache Amen variation, the ride, uh, they all get put into a group where I've got like um, a, a few more effects on the go there. Um, I've got more of this analog, analog tape saturation on the go. Um, <laughs> Really done like that much to it, just like tiny bit of EQ up here, just like um, a bit of boost at the top, literally 0.5 on the high gain, uh, and just basically a bit of compression, a bit of compression, a bit of saturation, just gives it a little bit more fizz. But again, not not too much to take away from the kind of original sound of the break. This this snare just gives it a little bit more a little bit more crunch on the snare. Not I've left it quite back in the mix so it doesn't take away from like the original break, but it's just got this this little do going, yeah, and uh I quite like it, it's a bit jungly. Although it's like a layered snare, it's it's not something I've like chucked over all the snares. It's more like uh, just adding to the rhythm of the break. Um, it, it's more about the uh, the content rather than just trying to get more power out. Which is why I've only got you know one or two every few few snares or so, and it's just um, it's just making the pattern more interesting. So that, like this one's not about fatness. Like it, in my eyes, I've got enough fatness just with like the think snare and like this little Apache Amen snare going on top of it. And like the think snare is so lovely, I've pretty much just ridden the whole tune out with that. That's all good. Uh, just one more thing, just just for a little bit of weight. Uh, it's just this like a single kick drum going underneath. Uh, just gives it that extra bit of like thwunk on the bottom end. So um, I'll solo the brakes with and without the kick drum.
gives it like that that works sort of like heavy heavy weight on the bottom end of that. Um, you can see where I zoom in on this again. It's just audio dropped in, um, but I've I've kind of uh, just raised the velocity or taken it off on a couple of the other hits because um, when you've got like a natural break and you've got like kicks and snares on and through the drummers, you know the drummer puts more emphasis on some of the kicks and the snares and others. You've got your ghost hits, which is like. Um, the, you know the quiet snares in between the main rhythm and the drum break uh, so you don't always necessarily want to have like the same velocity kicks and snares happening all the way through it's quite good to kind of emulate what a drummer's doing and just put emphasis on the ones you want you can still have a kick drum in that's that's not so weighty it just kind of hints at it so just in uh, in this little bit here I'll take um just gives it more of a natural roll in, in terms of the uh, effects I've got on this kit, um, I've just got the EQ and um, again I've, I've, I've got, I've rolled the low end off, um, just like a roll, up, a roll off at about like 70, 80 hertz, because um, I, want, I want most of my low end to be occupied by the bass, like when say in house and techno it's like you've got this, um, uh, the kick and the bass line have to kind of share the same space because so much of the the tune is driven by this like this pounding kick drum. Uh, with well, especially older drum and bass like this like jungle kind of ravey stuff, the um, the weight is all in the it's all in the bottom end, it's all in the bass. Uh, the the breaks they kind of supply they they supply the energy, um, they supply the snap. Like the breaks have never really been about weight for me. Like the weight is in the sub. Uh, and that's, that's so yeah the, the very bottom end of this tune is just all about the bass um, so I, I, I often roll my kicks off like about 70 80 hertz um, just so yeah it just gives more room for the for the sub to kind of occupy that bottom end for some reason there's a reverb on my yeah, kick channel as well I've got it doing absolutely nothing I think I might have tried like um, something a little bit automation and decided not to go through with it but yeah I, I wouldn't put reverb on a kick I think that was just me trying to do something funky at some point and decided not to. Um, so yeah, ignore this. This is. I don't want to delete it just in case it does do something. It's okay now. I've got my, uh, my I've got my brakes. I've got this ride running over it. Um, I've got my kick. Oh, one more little thing. Just this little hat. Little shaker riding underneath. Um, uh, it's, you've got, when in your kind of standard more modern drum and bass it's, it's quite normal, you've got your break, you've got meaty kicks and snares and you've just got like um, you've just got a real present hat or shaker that will just like ride over the top ticking over it'll be, it'll be kind of a real feature in the tune. And the thing is with the, the more jungly stuff there's um, if you keep it stripped back to the raw breaks you kind of like uh, the feature's got to be on the percussion that, that's within those breaks like you're using those breaks for a reason um, so you don't want to just like chuck too many elements on top and just have too many ticky hats or shakers going but I just wanted a, li a little bit more roll and a little bit more pace with this beat um, so just very subtly I kind of just almost just layered this underneath and I, I kind of um, I got it kind of coming in and out with the rhythm you can you can barely really hear I really wanted to be stuck in the background I just add this extra little pace to the brakes um, again, same technique. I've just got a little loop and um, kind of got bits fading in and out every now and again. You can kind of hear how subtle it is. I don't know if you'll even hear the difference when it's in or out. Oh well, yeah, you can. So it's got this kind of stop starty vibe going on, and just just by putting this extra little bit of shaker in. A bit more of like a, a sleeky roll, just picks up the pace a little bit. Um, uh, and at that point, that's enough for me. I've, I've got my brakes like they're sounding kind of raw, um, got that kind of raw jungly vibe going on. And um, I don't, I don't need to do much else. Like I'm, I'm quite happy just keeping it very, very basic. Just like another rhythmic element. It's not so much. Um, we've got these kind of a couple like little bongo and conga kind of delayed bits in. I'll just play the two of these. Uh, it's not so much about 
layering up the beats. It's this, I suppose, this is more like um, melodic content in my eyes. It might not melody, but it's, it, this is just adding more music and kind of effects, like not so much so trying to get more weight or any kind of layering on the drums. Again, just like little bits of um, audio, got a bit of reverb, a bit of EQ on that, just taking out the bottom end. A lot of the sounds I chuck in, it's, it's good to just get rid of the bottom end on kind of anything that might have it, even if it doesn't have like um, a low end on it that you can see, like there might just be some like a real low grumble that's pretty much inaudible. And um, just by taking out the lows on sounds that don't even have it, you're just you're freeing up more space for the, the bass and the mix in the, at the end of the tune. So yeah, the, the little delay can hear, that's actually in the original sample. Um, and I've kind of just, I've warped it just to kind of fit with the track. Uh, and again, it's just... Um, actually, this, this one kind of little delay bit here, this is... Um, let's see if I did that. Yeah, it's just a fade. So essentially, like... Um, you can kind of replicate delay, you can have a little bit more control just using the fade. You can kind of really get its tail out the way you want to. So yeah, it's just um, replicating delay unit just, just with the fade. Quite uh, just quick, simple way of doing that. And you, you really get the control about like you can really fine tune like how how it fades out. So what I've got, I think I've got my full loop now, like I've got my drop, and I've got my kind of uh, first 32 bars of roll out of the drop, so I'll just play through that. So yeah, essentially the, the drop is like, it's the same as the breakdown but with beats on top of it. Kind of a continuation of the melody I introduced at the start. We've got this 16 bar loop. Uh, just introduce this extra little vocal just to give that variation between the 32 bars. the kind of breaks like drifting in out a little bit and um, so one of the reasons I like to put all my breaks into a group um, as well as apply like kind of like you know you can put compression and, and saturation on, on all the breaks together um, it's the ability to automate all the breaks which is um, let's see so you can see and just just to put some emphasis on like certain parts when like other other elements come in. I've got like uh, this. so I've just got this little high pass and break once this this other vocal comes in. And one other little thing I've got these little cut up like kind of rewind samples, um, just like yeah old school kind of jungle like so I've chopped up a bit just to um, differentiate from the original. It just kind of sits back there in the mix. Uh, we love a good rewind in jungle. One of the different things um, I do with this, uh, the kind of jungly ravey stuff, you never kind of, um, you never really dwell on the same loop for too long. Like uh, something that's really notable about the early stuff is all over the place in terms of arrangement. Um, it's not like this kind of this thing where you just have like 64 bars of like the same kind of loop rolling and then with like a, a slight variation, the hi hat coming in and out. Um, you'd kind of maybe you have like 16, 32 bars of one loop, and then it just changed dramatically into something else. And um, we'll get into that a little bit later in the tune with the switch up. But like the the difference in writing this kind of old school sounding stuff is beforehand, I'd I'd kind of have my my main loop. I'd I'd start with like the eight bar loop. I'd work on that, turn it into 16 bars. Um, turn that into 32 bars and I'd have that section then like the next 32 would maybe be just the introduction of like one sound or take a pad out or something 
it'd, it'd very much be a rollout. And I'd be able to kind of write those tunes. Once I had that 16, I could just copy and paste that, uh, make a breakdown, copy and paste the other one. And, and just with taking like the odd sound in and out, you could kind of get a whole tune out of that. But um, I kind of want these old school ones a bit, a bit more kind of mash up. Um, just like you never quite know where they're gonna go, so I, I I tend to work on these like every sixteen bars. I'll I'll work on them like that way. I'll just I'll just plot the tune out sixteen by sixteen, and you'll see what I mean when I get into it in a minute. Like things kind of duck out when you don't quite expect them to, but um, just to kind of like transition into the kind of main switch up that's gonna happen later in the tune. I've just taken the main melody out and. Uh, so from here, it's kind of going to a little kind of drifty pad rollout. again in this tune I've got this kind of like it sounds like the brakes are getting kind of crushed and distorted every now and again and um, this is why I've got this uh, again with the analog tape strip I've been automating the uh, the drive of the saturation and like and the color of it so you can see in here just when I transition between like one part to the next um, I've automated the brakes kind of break up and it's, this is something like um, uh, the reason I'm doing this is that I, I look, this stuff is essentially like influenced by the old tapes I used to listen to where the, the quality would kind of, you know, if you had a really old tape it could break up, like maybe you had to like stick it back together, a bit of the seller tape or something like that, but you just have these instances of like, like crackliness that just kind of ducked in and out of the mix and, um, you know, I just wanted to emulate that, not in a completely uncontrolled way, but just kind of work that into the mix creatively with these like transitions so you can hear. Uh, again I've just gone on the automation on the tape drive and you see the saturation and the uh, just as a just basically making the break break up uh, and just just making that kind of work with the music see like uh, from from the first part of the tune where I, just, I kind of rolled it out with that initial melody um, I kind of want to segue into like another section uh, I didn't want to do this too suddenly so I've just got this little um, this little spacey part where I've dropped the main melody out and sometimes when you when you drop when you drop something out of the tune it, it can kind of work it just goes raw but like sometimes it feels like something is missing it's, it's often a good idea to introduce a new element just to kind of ease that kind of transition uh, that could be like extra drums extra shakers or something like that but um, in this instance I've got this uh, the original pad just going a bit more spacey with this um, all I've done is so I've got the original like melody here and what I've done is just copied this to another channel um, and I've kept the warp function on, so it's, it's the same length, but I've pitched it down like 12 semitones. It's like a full octave down, so as an extra layer. And it EQ'd that separately. So along with the top pad, you've got... It's like a thicker atmosphere. actually hear this this lower pad kind of pulsing a little bit um, the reason I did this is because because it's like so low and like it's occupies that low end a bit more I didn't want to kind of muddy up the rhythm like get it muddy with the kick or anything so you've got I've got this little um, 
this is what I tend to use side chain compression for. Um, as I said earlier, it's not. It's, I don't really use it to get extra loudness or anything like that. But it's really good to get kind of nice, like rhythmic pulses and just make make pads like move around a little bit more. So you can see here. I've just got this side chain like going to the kick, like drop the threshold down by 11 dB, and it just kind of um, it ducks in and out whenever the kick's hitting. So that's all we've got time for now. Um, if you want to see the rest of the video and kind of like get just a full breakdown of what happened with this tune, then you've got to buy the current issue, the next issue of Computer Music Magazine, uh, which in shops now, safe. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android and in print.